What do we notice in the middle of the, of the people here? Well, what's this? A, this path. a walkway or a path or a road? Yeah. What are the people going to? They're going to put something on the roadway. What are they going to put on the roadway? What does the Bible say, Ernie? They're going to put the palms on the road. They're going to put the, some palm leaves on the road. On the roads? Well, they're cloaks, yes. Okay, so there's the pathway now covered in their cloaks and in the palm leaves as well. Now, who do you think is coming along? Who, why have they put all these things down? Because Jesus is coming. Because Jesus is coming, yeah. What do you think Jesus is, is coming along in? Is he coming along in a big car or a big carriage? What do you think, Henry? Donkey. On a donkey. Well, that's a strange thing to come in on. But here he is, coming in on a donkey. But did Jesus like to be near big crowds? What do you think, Eden? Not so much, no. He, he often wanted to be in quiet places on his own. And often when he had healed somebody, he would say to them, do not tell anybody what's happened to you. Don't keep talking about me because it's not my time yet to do what I need to do. But now suddenly things have changed. Now Jesus is about to become what he was always meant to be. He's now saying, now is the time for me to become the king. The king that you've all been waiting for, and I am now going to go to a special city. What's the city that he's going to? We read it in the story. Grace. Jerusalem. Good job. Jerusalem. He's going to Jerusalem, and he's coming in as the king. Do you and know what they shout out as Jesus comes near? What do they shout out? There's a word they shout. Do you know, Grace? Hosanna. Good job. Hosanna. Yeah, it is Hosanna. So they're shouting out Hosannas. They're smiling and uh, they're doing something else as well. What are they doing with the palm leaves, do you think? Henry? Waving. Waving, Jesus. They're waving the palm leaves. We know these things when these happen. <laughs> the, the Romans are in charge of Jerusalem and the people of Jerusalem, do you think they liked having the Romans there? No, they didn't. And so they think, wow, the king has arrived and this king is going to throw the Romans out. That's why he's come. That's why they're so excited. Finally, the king that we've been waiting for, we're not going to be under the control of Rome anymore. Why do you think they put their cloaks on the ground? Why do you think the people did that? Why do you think, Henry? To make, to form like a more beautiful path. To form a more beautiful path. It's what you used to do when a king would come in to take control of a city. Was Jesus going to be the sort of king they wanted him to be? No, he wasn't. Because he wasn't there to throw out the Romans. He has come to make a kingdom, but his kingdom isn't going to be in Jerusalem. Where is Jesus' kingdom going to be, Henry? In heaven. In heaven. And he's going to invite everybody in to become part of his kingdom but it's a spiritual kingdom. That means a kingdom in our hearts and in our spirits, not a kingdom here on earth. Okay. So if he's heading to Jerusalem, a king would normally go towards his palace. Where is Jesus going to in Jerusalem, do you think? To the church. The church? What do we call the big church in Jerusalem? The temple. The temple. Now, the temple, of course, it's where... He is worshipped. It's his special palace. It's, it's the temple of God. And so Jesus is now coming into his kingdom. You know, when a king would normally come into a city to take control of it, he'd normally come with a big army, wouldn't he? He'd come with a big procession, maybe on a big, big horse. But do you notice how Jesus just comes humbly? That's the kind of king he is. He doesn't come with any kind of big ceremony. He just comes quietly on a little donkey. There's no big army with him. They haven't got a red carpet out. They've just put on the ground what they have to show the type of king he is and to show that he is a king for everybody. But just a few days later, something very bad happens to Jesus. He gets crucified. Now, that's less than a week's time. Isn't it funny how these people are all shouting and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, here comes the king in the name of the Lord. And then just a week later, what are they shouting out? Kill him, Kill him crucify him. But Jesus didn't fail. You see, Jesus came to be a king and his kingdom was made through his death. It's only through his death that he made his kingdom. So Jesus went deliberately to Jerusalem to die. Now, it sounds a funny thing, doesn't it, that you make your kingdom through dying, but it's only through Jesus' death that we become part of his kingdom. He's only our king 
because he had to die for our sins. And unless he died for our sins, we'd still have our sins on us. And if our sins were still on us, then we wouldn't be able to be part of Jesus' kingdom. 